to another broadcast of Comics Let's Talk, Rich Buckler. I'm Kevin Given. I write a column for the website Comics for Sinners. The column is called Given to Me. I also review comic books on that site. You want to check it out, see if you agree with my reviews or not. Let me know what you think. Uh, my column Given to Me is usually dedicated to my character, Carl Vincent, Vampire Hunter. The production of the movie Last Rites, The Return of Sebastian Basilis. The film is being produced by Crisp Filmworks. You can check out all things Carl Vincent on Amazon, Indie Planet, Drive Through Comics, and Kindle. You can look inside the books if you want to, check them out, see if they're for you, let me know what you think. The photos you're looking at right now are production stills from the movie which is in production now through Crisp Filmworks in Lakeland, Florida. Please check out my column and check out all things Carl Vincent. Go to Facebook, like the Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter page. And now let's get on to our discussion about the late Rich Buckler right here on Comics Let's Talk. The world that Rich Buckler was born into in 1949, we saw the heavyweight boxing champion Joe Lewis retire undefeated. Of course, years later, he would go back into the ring and ruin his perfect record. But for now, Joe Lewis, 1949, retired undefeated. The 21st Academy Awards saw Hamlet win Best Picture. President Harry S. Truman unveiled his Fair Deal program and won an, an upset in the presidential election over Thomas Dewey, who was expected to defeat him. Also, the Edgar Allan Poe toaster arrived for the first time to toast the beloved author at his gravesite. English astronomer Fred Hoyle coins the term Big Bang during a BBC Third radio broadcast. The North Atlantic Treaty is signed in Washington, D.C., creating the NATO Defense Alliance. The Catholic Church believed they found the bones of St. Peter. The Apostle Peter, of course, is considered to be the first pope by the Catholic Church. Now, in the world of comic books in 1949, superhero comics were losing popularity once the war was over, and many titles were being canceled. This predates the rigid restrictions by the impounded by the Comics Code Authority by five years. Many soldiers read comic books to pass the time during the war, and when the war ended, a lot of those soldiers stopped reading comic books, and something had to happen to win back the fan base. Among the comp cancellations that year were Columbia Comics, which is now defunct themselves, Big Shot, number 104. Timely Comics, which of course became Marvel Comics, would cancel Two Gun Kid at number 10, plus DC's Boy Commandos ended with number 36. On the bright side, Marvel Mystery Comics would become Marvel Tales and usher in a new era of fandom. DC would debut Superboy Comics and Timely brought us Kid Cold Outlaw. We jump ahead to 1961. Rich Buckler was 12 years old, and his biggest influence in the world of comics came out that year. Fantastic Four, number one. Timely now was officially Marvel Comics. National Periodicals publication was open on the stock market, and the initial DC, which stands for Detective Comics, like I need to tell you that, were now in the company logo. Other influences for the young buckler that year probably included Flash, number 123, which brought us the flash of two worlds. The story introduces Earth 2, and more generally, the concept of the multiverse, to DC Comics. Also from DC that year of importance to superhero enthusiasts came Action Comics number 283 and Adventure Comics number 291, the adventures of Superman and Superboy respectively. Just six years later, Buckler would break into the medium of comics with the four-page historical story Freedom Fighters, Washington Attacks Trenton, which appeared in the King Features comic book Flash Gordon number 10, that of course November 1967. It was Jack the King Kirby himself who suggested to the young buckler that he relocate from his home in Detroit, Michigan to New York City in the late 60s. And from Wikipedia, at DC Comics, Buckler would draw the Rose and the Thorn backup stories in Superman's Girlfriend Lois Lane, number 117 to 121. That's December 71 through April of 1972. Buckler drew the first three issues of writer Don McGregor's Black Panther series in Jungle Action, Volume 2, numbers 6 through 8. 
we're talking September 1973 through January 1974. I run that Comics Bulletin in 2010 ranked third on its list of the top 10 1970s marvels. Rich Buckler finally fulfilled a decade-long dream in 1974 when assigned to draw Marvel's flagship series, The Fantastic Four, on which he stayed for two years. During this period, Buckler created the cyborg anti-hero Deathlock, who starred in an ongoing feature debuting in Astonishing Tales number 25 in August of 1974. Buckler would live to see his creation come to life on the silver screen through the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. television series. It was also Witch Buckler who hired the young George Perez as his studio assistant. In 1975, Buckler worked on Atlas Comics The Demon Hunter with David Anthony Kraft. The book and the company folded after a few issues, but Buckler revived the character with Devil Slayer for Marvel and Bloodwing for his own Galaxia magazine. Buckler collaborated with writer Jerry Conway on a Superman vs. Shazam story published an all-new collector's edition in April of 1978. He drew the newspaper comic strip The Incredible Hulk for approximately six months in 1979. A Justice League story by Conway and Buckler, originally intended for all-new collector's edition, saw print in Justice League of America number 210 through 212, January through March 1983. Buckler and Roy Thomas then created the World War II superhero team, the All-Star Squadron in a special insert in Justice League of America number 193, August of 1981, which led to the team's own title the following month. In 1983, the Comics Journal accused Buckler of plagiarism, saying that he had a reputation as a swipe artist who copied poses and layouts from previous artists' work. Buckler would sue the magazine for libel, but then later dropped the lawsuit. Buckler worked for Archie Comics in 1983 and 1984, when that publisher briefly revived its Red Circle comic superhero line, he recruited Carrie Burkett to write the Mighty Crusaders title. In 1985, Buckler returned to Marvel and briefly drew the spectacular Spider-Man with writer Peter David, where they produced the storyline for The Death of Gene DeWolf. He also served as editor for a short-lived line of comics by Solson Publications, where, in 1987, he created Reagan's Raiders. He was the author of two books on how to draw comic books. In 2015, he became an Inkwell Awards ambassador. Buckler drew hundreds of comic book covers and therefore drew just about every major character for both Marvel and DC Comics. And tragically, after a long, drawn-out battle with cancer, Rich Buckler would die May 19th, 2017. Another comic book icon that has passed on in 2017. Thanks for joining me once again. Check out my reviews and my column on Comics for Sinners. And look up Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter on Facebook. If you like what you see, click like. And stay tuned for more information on upcoming comic books and movies and animation featuring Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter. You can find all things Carl Vincent on Amazon, Indie Planet, Drive Through Comics, and Kindle. Until next week, this is Kevin Given saying so long and keep reading those comics.